Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Make It Make, where I always try to encourage you, if you can't get it to make, then make it make. Today we are going to be water bathing corn. Now just to let you know right off the bat, because I let everyone know this, that water bathing corn is considered um, a non-USDA approved method because corn is a low acid food and according to the recommendations of the USDA, you were supposed to pressure can corn, okay? But if you are familiar with my channel, um, I've been encouraged by different cultures and books to do things a little bit differently. The original way of canning. Some people like my methods, some people don't, and that's fine. All I know is that I would encourage you to do your own research and do what you feel is comfortable in your own kitchen. Because like I always say, your kitchen, your rules. Now this is the first time I am ever water bathing corn because honestly, normally, I just freeze my corn. And I've never, I mean, I've never had a need to really have it canned. But I got really interested in it because people kept asking me, can you water bath corn? Can you water bath corn? Well, we're gonna try that today. I will say that I'm not gonna have like a lot of information yet as far as the results because I'm only doing it right now with you guys. The thing I can say is, uh, or the things I can tell you is what I am doing right now. Obviously I'm husking this corn. This is a sweeter corn. It is a bicolor sweet corn. And supposedly water bath corn is best when the food is fresh. So like if it's the moment it's picked, it should be canned. It's kind of like the same thing with pickles, you know, like if you pick cucumbers, it should pro the best results would be if it's canned that day. If you pick green beans, can it that day. I think that's sort of standard when it comes to food. Now people have different ways of canning their corn through the water bath. Some people add sugar if it's a corn that's not so sweet. Even if it is a sweet corn, I've seen people add sugar to it. Um, salt is optional. So there's that. Um, some people like to blanch their corn before they water bath it. Some people see no need to blanch the corn as they're gonna be cooking it for quite some time. You know, it's one of those things you gotta kind of figure out what do you wanna do in your house and how is it gonna how is it gonna work for you in your kitchen? So I decided after a lot of reading what I'm gonna do. And that's the process that I wanna show you today. And if you're watching this video, then that means that it turned out. <laughs> and then we can discuss the results of the end product in a couple months. But in the meantime, this is what I'm doing. <sighs> okay, so I have all the corn husked. And I think what I'm gonna do is rinse them off. Get some of the silks off of it. I think there's like a brush for this or a method to get some of the silks off more. I think about it every year and I end up doing nothing but just trying to pull it off. So if you know a good way, let me know. All right, so I'm just 
rinsing it. Taking the silks off. It's, I'm basically rinsing it to help clean it off a little bit better. is washed I'm just gonna start cutting it off now some people blanch their corn before they process it like through the water bath some people don't because they figured we're gonna be cooking it for three and a half hours why do the blanching but for me I just rinsed them in like super hot water and I'm not gonna do the blanching process. For me, it just makes sense to do it this way. Plus handling hot corn is always pretty miserable. So if I can do it this way and it can be successful, then that's what I'm gonna do. These corn husks, I actually still have some saved from last year. I wanted to make a syrup. I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet. Uh, because I know Rachel did from 1870s Homestead and I'd like to replicate that recipe and see if it comes out because that'd be really great to have a syrup made from corn husks or you can make corn cob jelly. So I'm working with two dozen corn, ears of corn, and I'm going to be canning in pints. So we'll see what the, the yield is. I'm just gonna start packing it into my pints. I'm gonna leave about an inch of head space. So I'm noticing that if I put two full cups of corn and then just sort of sort of shake it a little bit. gives me a little bit more than one inch of head space. I'll just add a little bit more. And then when we add the water, we can adjust it too. All right, so I have nine pints here. I feel confident that I would have gotten 10 pints, but we're gonna have tacos tonight, so I'm gonna leave this for tacos. But feel good about 10 pints here. I am gonna ask, add like a half a teaspoon of canning salt. This is not necessary for canning. This is just for flavoring. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do with mine. Now I did see someone add lemon juice to theirs, but most people that I've looked at don't. So this is just the way I'm going to do it. Next step I'm going to do is add some hot water. And I am going to debubble. And top it off again. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now, I don't even know if I mentioned this in the video or not because I'm kind of forgetting where I was at with uh, saying what I was doing, but I did make sure that all my glasses, my jars were prepped and prepared. When I'm canning, I like to make sure that everything is nice and clean. And as I 
and debubbling. You can adjust the head space. Add some more water if needed. And because my jars are hot, I'm gonna make sure, and the water is hot, I'm gonna also make sure that my canner and the water in the canner is hot as well. Also, <laughs> I do like to use a very good lid. And you guys know how much I love for jars lid. I do have a code for 10% off every single time you buy. It's not just a one-time thing, which is nice that you could save 10% each time. But these are the jar lids that I like to use. They're awesome. Um, plus, I mean, the company and the people are, are great as well. All right. Fingertip tight. All right, I'm going to add my corn to the water bath. This is just very interesting. The water bath timing is going to be for three and a half hours. All right, so our jars have hit a rolling boil and that is when you want to start the time. I'm going to water bath this corn for three and a half hours. This is what your rolling boil should look like. Nice and vigorous and rolling over. Now, because this is going to be such a long water bath, your water is going to evaporate. So what do you do? I keep a kettle close by and I monitor my water levels. Once I see the water sort of just skimming over the lids, then I take my kettle, I keep, and I bring it up to boiling, and I will pour it and top it off in my canner here. You're gonna do that about three or four times because again, this is a really long water bath. As long as the water is on top of the jars and just is consistent, you're gonna be fine. Just make sure that you're obviously putting in super hot water to not interfere with the rolling boil, okay? So I'll see you guys in a couple hours. Okay, so our three, hour, three and a half hour water bath is finished. So I'm going to take one out and see what it looks like. I know you guys can never really see here too much with the lighting, but I'm gonna move all these jars onto my kitchen table and we'll take a look at it there. All right, so I moved all my corn to the table and I'm gonna show you an up close shot of it. I'm really pleased with this. I think it turned out really well. The color looks great. I'm glad there's no browning. The only thing that I'm concerned about is did I leave enough head space? Um, the corn is, has expanded a little bit. I did say one inch of head space, but I think for some jars, I may have gone over a little bit. So I'll know in a couple days if that's going to be a problem because if, if it expands, then it'll pop my lids off. But other than that, I mean, I think I did okay, but we'll see. Again, this is my first time doing this, so I don't have a lot of answers to some of the questions uh, that, you may, that you may have for me. I'm gonna need some time to tell you about the texture, what do I think, so give me a couple of months because I'd like them for them to sit on the shelf um, before I actually put them in a bowl, taste it, or use them in use them in a recipe. As far as the shelf life, that's another thing that, of course, I don't know because unless it's something that's like tested by the USDA, I can't give you a 
exact shelf life for any of this stuff. But um, I'm kind of old school when it comes to that. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and as always, take care and God bless.